Hello, welcome back to Beauty Bee. We won't be living in this white void the entire video. It's actually going to be mostly my hands and an interesting little paisley rainbow scarf that I have never actually worn going through these items that were in my Shop by Stash video, but I thought I would at least come in at the beginning and say hi and introduce what this video is about. Every month I do a Shop by Stash. I have the items that I've had pulled in October. We'll go through those items and how and if I used them, and then we will switch gears and pull something for November. Wild to think that it's almost November. Did I mostly come on just because I have new lipstick today and I love it and I wanted to show it off a little bit? Yes. So let's get into the video. Laid out in front of me, I have all of the items that were in my Shop My Stash in October. Um, let's start with this Camelina and Strobe Luminizing Primer. I do not believe that this would have been in the video from last month because I got this in my Ipsy bag in October. But this is... I mean, they say it's a luminizing primer. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it just from the dot that I put on my hand, but I cannot imagine using this all over my face. This has a very strong peach glow. I think you could use a little bit of this mixed into foundation, but I think that might even be a little too much. The way that I've been using this is um, I will put it just on my cheekbones and use it basically as a liquid highlight. It's a subtle liquid highlight, but it's pretty. And I don't feel any great need to keep this out another month, but I've really been enjoying it. I've used this probably five or six times, I would guess. There's so much to cover here with the lips. Let's just move on to other stuff first. Um, eyes, I kept things pretty easy as far as shot my stash went in eyes in October. I had a giant rainbow palette that I had pulled together to use for actually a couple of months and I mostly wanted to stick to those but I did pull out a my ColourPop Super Shock in Ladybird which is this sort of a warm toned silver glitter. This is really pretty it's just not super every day. But I did use this a couple of times and I really do enjoy it when I use it. It's just a hard item to get myself to use. So I am glad that I got a couple more uses out of it. I think I'm actually starting to expand that pan a little bit, but I don't know. I don't put too much weight in pan in these two super shocks because they are so malleable that I mean, you can pan them in a single use if you want to. Next up, I have my Maybelline City Mini Palette in Chill Brunch Neutrals. This I pulled because it is in my project pan for the year. I'm trying to finish this gold as well as this lilac shade, and I am making good progress on that. We can talk a little bit more about that in my um, project pan update in a couple of days. I've also been using this cream shadow almost every day to set my eyeshadow primer and I'm making good progress on that as well. So I'm really happy that I had this out. I don't know yet exactly what I'm going to pull as far as eyeshadow goes, but I would consider keeping this out for another month. It was really convenient to just have it sitting out on my vanity and not needing to dig through a drawer to get to it. Next, I had my liquid liner. This one's the Breakup Proof Liner from Wet n Wild. I just had so much dark lipstick, which we'll get into in a minute here, that I felt like I was going to be using my black liquid liner a lot, and I was right. I did use it quite a bit. Now for cheek products, I think the items that I originally had pulled were actually just these two along with maybe my e.l.f. blush quad but this is the Tarte Park Avenue Princess bronzer. I have a really really good dip going in this. I feel like I might actually hit pan. I feel like that should have ended with soon but it, it really 
it really didn't need to. I just, this has always seemed never ending and I actually think I might hit pan eventually, possibly in the far distant future now. So I did use that many times. I couldn't tell you how many, but I got good use out of that. This I thought I would get more use out of. This is my Wet n Wild Don't Flutter Yourself blush. It's, I believe they call it, yeah, they just call it a baked blush. I consider this more of a blush topper. It is very, very pretty, but it's very glowy. I used this maybe twice this month. I just found myself reaching for a little bit warmer blushes that I don't feel this went quite as well with, though, especially during spring. I get a ton of use out of this, so I'm not super unhappy with that. This I actually got about halfway through the month. This is from Pacifica, and it was actually in the same Ipsy bag as this Seraphine Botanicals primer. This is a duo. We've got a gold highlighter on one side and kind of a dusty peachy pink blush on the other. They're both very pretty. Um, I've been using both of these actually. I kind of worried when I first got this that this highlighter was going to be a little bit too dark. And it is a shade that I want to be careful with because it does show up as a little bit darker than my skin tone if I put on a little bit too much. But as long as I'm careful, it's fine and it does give a really pretty almost wet shine. This blush is understated but super pretty. This is the kind of shade that I think would go with almost any look, at least for me. Overall, this is just a really nice little duo. I had never tried any makeup from Pacifica until this year and I've actually ended up trying several different items and being really impressed with them overall. So this has been kind of a big hit. Then finally, my Rosé Champagne blush. I use this all the time. I don't think I even pulled this this month. It just kind of ended up out because that's what happens with this product. And yeah, I use it a lot. I'm expanding the pan and I'm really, really happy about it. Okay, I've put off the lips long enough. I pulled out a bunch of dark lipsticks this month and then I think I added a couple of dark lipsticks just as the month went along. So the deep ones that I pulled at the beginning of the month were these three. This is a deep purple from Kiko. It's very black and violet. I would swatch, but I think all three of these will actually stain my hands. And I believe I've worn all of them in the past month in videos. They're pretty much the only deep lips I've been wearing recently. The next one we have is a thousand percent from ColourPop. This one is a little bit more of a red brown. It's not crazy deep. I think that especially if you were of a deeper skin tone, this might not even read as vampy at all, but on me, this is like everyday wearable vamp. And I have really been enjoying the shade. I think that of the dark colors, this is probably the one I've worn most often. And then I have Black Cherry from Sephora, which looks like a burgundy brown in the tube, but I find pulls a little bit more reddish and almost a little bit more pink when it's sheared out. Uh, I can wear this both full on and sheared out. I've worn it both ways over the past month. And this is a lipstick that I'm not crazy impressed with the formula. I feel like it's a little bit dry and it doesn't wear quite as well as I want it to, but the color is really pretty and it is somewhat unique to my collection. So I, yeah, I'm not sure how I feel about that super long term, but I did enjoy wearing it a couple times over the past month. I think I pulled both of these out in the last video too. First we have Elsin 2, which is this red-orange from Pat McGrath. 
It is beautiful, but it transfers like crazy. It's kind of an interesting transfer though, in that it transfers and you'll make a mess of your glass or even your bottom, uh, not your bottom lip. You'll make a little line on your chin, but it doesn't look on your lips as though any product is worn away. Eighth wonder of the world right there. And then I have ABH Dead Roses. which is this beautiful mauve shade. This is like the most perfect fall color. I love this. If you are into a cool toned fall lip, this is not that warm orangey shade that I think we associate with fall a lot in the beauty community. Take, maybe consider looking into this. I really enjoy it. And then at some point during the month, I purchased this from Sephora. This is one of their melting lip clicks. And you click this up from the bottom and it is this glossy format lipstick. It's quite sheer. The shade that I have is Brulee, which is this warm brown. I really like this. It's very comfortable. It smells nice. Um, my one concern with this is that it might run out really quickly. I have no concept of how much I'm using each time I use it, other than that I'm using three to five clicks. What does that work out to? No idea. So overall, um, I kept things pretty neutral for the face and the eyes so I could go really deep with the lips this month. And I think that it worked out pretty well for me. So I'm going to go shop for next month and we'll talk about what I've picked in just a second. Okay, so I have pulled my selections for next month. Um, let's talk through them. We'll start with the things that you probably are less interested in. First is my Milk Makeup Lip and Cheek Tint in Work. This is in use it or lose it territory, so uh, I don't particularly want to lose it, so uh, time to use it. <laughs> it's really that simple. I decided to keep out my Tarte Park Avenue Princess Bronzer because I first of all don't have another bronzer in a single compact, but I feel like I'm close. To hitting pan, maybe, potentially. Next, another Pacifica blush. I told you, I've been really liking Pacifica. This is actually what I'm wearing today. This is the shade Wild Rose, and it is this super glowy, almost like a coppery blush highlighter hybrid. It's very, very pretty. This looks, to me, based on what I've seen, a lot like uh, I think it's Songbird from Becca, R.I.P. And finally, this is an eyeshadow duo, but I tend to use it more as a face highlighter. This is from Kiko, and it's one of their baked duos. And it is the most beautiful, understated, yellow highlight. I can make this pull super, super glowy and insane, or I can keep this really understated. It's really, really a lovely color. I'm excited to play around with that this month. Next, let's move to eyes. I have my Aura and Out palette, but I've just pulled kind of a mixture of different things. I know that this is looking very light for fall, but I will say that on my skin tone, especially this portion of the palette, these greens and this, these yellows, this orange, do not pull as light as they might on others. This shade in particular, uh, Healing Heart and then Fresh Cut, I think look very fall on me. I think these seven shades are originally from the palette and then I pulled in two from my Miss Bliss, this shimmery pink and then the shimmery peach just to give myself a little bit of something different. 
I think this is going to be really fun. This is almost giving me um, the same vibes as their Powerpuff Girls palette now that I'm looking at it. I'm going to have fun playing around with this, I think. And then I also brought in this very yellow liquid glitter from e.l.f. This is the shade 24 karat gold, and it is, yeah, I think that's a good descriptor. It's a very, very yellowy, bold gold, and I think that will be very fall. I also pulled in this Beauty For Real eyeliner. This is an olive liner. It does have a little bit of sheen to it, but nothing too crazy. I just thought that this might be helpful to ground the slightly lighter shades in this Aura and Out palette and make it, them pull a little bit more fall. Now let's get to this set of things. First we have this MAC powder. I actually just got this today. This is a deluxe sample of their Studio Fix powder in the shade NC20, I think. I think it's going to be just a little bit deep for me, but you know, they only gave you, I think, four options when picking out shades. Yeah, that's gonna be a little dark, but I think I can probably make it work, maybe. Maybe as like a really understated bronzer. We'll see. I am intrigued to give this a go though. I have my Melt Rebound Liquid Lipstick. I just, I want to make this work for fall. My lips have been really crazy dry lately. I changed up some medication and now my lips are just dry all the time. But I want to see if I can still make this work because this is such a pretty shade for fall. And it's not such a good formula that I find myself using it the rest of the year. So I really want to use this. Because I had so much color going on, I decided that I needed a nude lip. So I pulled out the shade Nude Look from Dior. I got this from Influencer. I feel like I don't usually swatch in these videos, but for some reason today, it seems like I need to swatch everything and I've made a complete mess out of one hand. And then these are my newest acquisitions. I actually just got these in the mail today and I'm so, so excited to play with them. This one I pulled out and applied as soon as I opened the package. This is Addicted to Chili from MAC. I mean, they're all from MAC. I got these in a set from Macy's for it's like so little money that I thought it was mismarked. I want to say that this was like regular price $24 on their website. And they had their mini holiday trios for Say like 26 or 27. I will definitely link this down in the description box. These were inexpensive to the point where I thought they had to be mismarked and that I was probably going to be getting minis. But no, these are full size. They still smell good. The packaging is lovely. And I think Macy's is running like 15% off their beauty stuff right now. So, you know, if you are in the market for MAC lipsticks, might be a good way to try some. I had never tried anything from MAC before today. Next up we have Ruby Woo, which is in the Retro Matte formula. Ooh, that's pretty. It's a very blue-based red. Look at that. That's pretty. I feel like that'll look very glamorous. For the holidays, love and then bated breath i really like the packaging on this one actually i like the packaging on all of these i like that the their limited edition packaging i think i guess i don't know i thought that all mac lipsticks were usually in that black bullet but i could totally be wrong Ooh, and this is pretty it's like a berry mauve so pretty. 
I am super excited to play around with these. Really excited to play with all of these. Um, Devoted to Chili is what I was wearing in the intro, and I think it is gorgeous. I'm really excited for these. Anyway, we got a little bit off track there talking about new lipstick, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope that it was interesting. Let me know what you thought of this format. Um, I admit that I chose this largely because my vanity is an absolute mess and I didn't want to deal with cleaning it up for the video, but I also think that this might be a nicer way to really look at the products than trying to show you my drawers. But thank you so, so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed and I hope you'll consider liking and subscribing if you did. I hope that I will see you all next time. Bye!